So, you think you know how votes are counted for the House of Representatives, but are not so sure about the Senate? Well, they are different. In Senate elections, you are voting to fill more than one vacancy, so the voting and counting the votes are a little more complicated. Let's see how this is done. Firstly, have you heard of a quota? It's the number of votes each candidate needs to be elected to the Senate. The quota is based on the number of formal votes across the whole state or territory and on the number of vacancies to be filled. Normally, you'd be voting for six senators if you live in a state or two if you live in one of the territories. For this election, let's make it easy. We'll elect two senators from six candidates. Now, remember how the Senate ballot paper is divided into two sections, above the line and below the line. You can vote either way. To vote below the line, you must number the boxes from one to six in order of your most favorite to least favorite. This person voted one for Elizabeth, two for Tony, three for John, four for Sally, five for Anne, and six for Dominic. Or you can vote above the line, where you simply put a number one against your preferred party or group. This person is voting for the party listed as Group A. It's a quicker way to vote, but remember, the big difference is that it's the party or group you have chosen that determines the order of your votes, not you. These votes will be distributed according to the preferences of the Group A party. Now, let's see how the votes are counted. In our election, the two successful candidates will each need 801 votes to be elected. Remember, that's called the quota. So, who's got there? John has 150. Dominic has 350. Elizabeth has 930. Anne has 140. Tony has 780. And Sally has 50. Well done, Elizabeth. She is immediately elected. Now, let's see how we select the other candidate. Elizabeth received 129 more votes than she needed for a quota. These are transferred to the candidates who were given second preference on Elizabeth's ballot papers. They're called transfer votes and are now added to those candidates' first preference votes. Here we go. Remember, the quota is 801. We still don't have a second candidate who has passed the quota so the candidate with the least number of votes is excluded and these votes are distributed. This process of exclusion and distribution continues until the next candidate has passed the quota and the second vacant Senate position is filled. And now, Tony has passed this quota with 805 votes. Congratulations to Tony as he joins Elizabeth in the Senate and our two vacancies have been filled. So, that's all you need to know about electing senators. But if you want to know a bit more, stay with me. Remember, we talked about a quota, the number of votes that has to be gained for a candidate to be elected. Well, here's how it's worked out. The quota is worked out by dividing the total number of formal votes by the number of vacancies plus one, then adding one. Let's say there are 2,400 formal votes. We divide this by three. That's two Senate vacancies plus one. This equals 800. We then add one, giving us a quota of 801. So that's how we calculate the quota that Elizabeth and Tony needed. Let's go back to our election. Elizabeth had 129 more votes than she needed to be elected. These are called surplus votes. I said earlier that these would go to the candidates who were the second choice of the voter and they helped Tony to be elected. But rather than randomly choosing 129 ballots as the surplus votes, we distribute all of Elizabeth's ballot papers at less than their full value. This is called the transfer value. 
The transfer value is worked out by dividing Elizabeth's 129 surplus votes by her 930 total votes. This gives us a transfer value of 0 0.13870967. Yes, that's very accurate, but with a large number of votes, it can make a difference. But to make it easy, we'll just round it off to 0 0.139. So, here we see the number of second preferences received by each candidate on Elizabeth's 930 ballot papers. These ballot papers are then multiplied by their transfer value and added to the first preference totals. This process of transferring surplus votes continues until they are all distributed. Remember, if all the vacancies have still not been filled, the candidate with the least number of votes is excluded and their votes distributed to the remaining candidates. So, this process of exclusion and distribution continues until all the vacant Senate positions have been filled. And that's how the Senate vote is counted. It's pretty complicated, but with the help of computers, the count is completed quickly and accurately.